Hello, um, welcome to you that's coming in. I'm going to give a couple minutes before I let some people join us here in a second. Um, but if you do join, I want to encourage you to share as well, or if you're watching this afterwards, go ahead and share it. I know some of you guys watch it live, and then some of you uh, will use it as a devotional in your small groups or whatever afterwards. Hey, Sarah, good to see you. And uh, so, yeah, if you join in, um, if you want to go ahead and share and invite other people to join us. Um, so basically what we're doing is, um, we are going to do a little bit of devotional here and then end in prayer. And, uh, so if there's anything that you want to, um, you know, anything that you'd like a devotional on, let me know what you're thinking, feeling, what you're facing, things like that. You can message, send a message to Red Church, uh, directly on this, on Facebook and, um, and I'll do my best to try to do that. Also, if you have prayer requests, please put it down there and, um, and I'll do my best to pray for you either while we're online or offline, I will pray. So uh, let's just open up with prayer and just see where it goes. Lord, in Jesus' name, we just pray for this time. We pray that you would have whoever's supposed to join us to join us. Um, and just pray, God, in Jesus' name, that you would bless this time, uh, bless it, this situation, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. All right. Again, if you are joining us and you want to share, go ahead and share. Um, and then if you have prayer requests, let us know. So what I'd like to talk about today is uh, it's the devotional is called Venting Reveals What's in Us. And I've done a couple of these kind of topics because I think it's kind of a prevalent thing in our situation where a lot of people, I mean, it, it's always been the case, but it's especially the case right now with more people at home where people are are um, using social media often to kind of be their uh, bashing post to beat up people online. And so I want to look at um, Psalm 109. And uh, hey, David, good to see you. Hey, Debbie. Hey, good to see you. Well, thanks for joining us. Uh, we're getting ready to do this devotional called Venting Reveals What's In Us. And again, if you have prayer requests, put it in the comments and I'll do my best to pray online or at the least um, offline. But the title is Venting Reveals What's In Us. And if you're just joining us, I know some of you guys are watching this after the fact, not live. Go ahead and share it, invite people in it. But Psalm 109 says, be this. Be not silent, O God, of my praise, for wicked and deceitful mouths are opened against me, speaking against me with lying tongues. They encircle me with words of hate and attack me without ceasing. And then he says this, in return for my love, they accuse me, but I give myself to prayer. Another translation says, but I am a man of prayer. And so what we're highlighting here is David, who has faced a lot of challenges. He's faced um Obviously, his, his life was in danger. He faced Goliath, which is the famous story. He faced Goliath. His son rebelled against him. There was a coup for his for his kingdom when I was the king. People that he helped defend betrayed him. And so he's often cry, crying out to God. But what we see here is people are out to get him. They're lying. There are some kind of uh, stuff happening behind the scenes. But he says, in return for my love, they accuse me, meaning he's you know, he does his best, but they accuse him. But he says, I give myself to prayer. He's a man of prayer. Then after verse five, there's a transition. And just think about these words. Think about how um, intense these words are. But it says this, may his days be few. May another take his office. May his children be fatherless and his wife a widow. You know, if his wife's a widow, guess what happened to the person, of course. This is what David's saying. May his children wander about and beg, seeking food far from the ruins they inhabit. This is David completely kind of open, and he is sharing um, kind of his heart. He's sharing that he's been betrayed, and you can sense the emotions that there, and maybe you can relate that someone's hurt you so much, or perhaps you see somebody on TV or online and, and it just, your emotions get just well up. I want to highlight here um, a key point. David, the Bible says he's a man after his own heart, was not a perfect person by any means. There's a lot we could go into for David. But one thing we know about David is that David knew who to vent to. David would go to the Lord and share his heart raw what he was dealing with. 
And I just want to highlight here um, a few different points about venting. And what I mean by venting is where we're upset, whatever, and we're sharing it with other people, um, what that means. And so number one is if you're taking notes for small groups, I know some of you guys are using this for small groups, but what we vent reveals what's in us. And you can tell this with David. What's in him is he is hurting. He's facing betrayal. But he says, I'm going to, you know, he says repeatedly throughout Psalms that he's going to trust the Lord. Um, I think right now in this season that we're in, there's a lot of people uh, dealing with different things, different situations. And so whatever is in them is coming out. So for people who are fearful, and most people are fearful of something. Some people are fearful of the virus. Some people are fear, fearful for, you know, losing jobs or finances or whatever it might be. But be cautious because what ends up welling up in the emotions, the fear often reveals what's in us, what sometimes has our control, what controls us, where do we look for our hope? Um, often, also what, uh, when, what what we vent also reveals our pride. When we look at someone and we see them and we're like, wow, why are they acting that way? Or why are they not doing it this way? They're an idiot. They're a moron. Then it also can reveal pride or or uh, where we see ourselves as higher or better than them in these situations. So it's a good question when 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 emotions and thoughts well up and we have to vent it out, we have to share it with someone. Uh, it's a good question to ask what is really controlling us where this emotion, if you dig down into the root of it, what is it really coming from? What is controlling me? What's in us is often revealed as we as we vent out. And it's the same thing if if a car, if the exhaust comes out or or something that's venting in, in the house, it reveals what's inside. The next thing is, is where we vent often reveals our hope. Where do you vent? Um, David here is venting to God. Now, I know that, you know, if you have a strong believing friend who's a believer and trusts the Lord, I mean, sometimes you have to have people to talk to and process things. But what you often see nowadays in our culture is people vent not just on social media, but in person about a lot of different things, about a lot of different people. And, um, and I just want to encourage us, especially for those who are, um, Christians. And I, especially, you know, I know some of you are part of Red Church and some of you are not, and you're more than welcome to be a part of this. If you're not a part of Red Church, but I just want to encourage, especially those who are part of Red Church is I want to ask you this question. When you give vent and when you vent out on social media, what does it really do? What does it accomplish? I, I want to ask you, do you think the way you vent and I'm not saying there aren't times to kind of make stands and, you know, uh, we'll get to a little bit more of that in a, in a minute. But is is your venting going to lead people to Christ or is it going to cause division? Because a lot of times what people are, are saying on social media, even the people I know, what they're really saying is, is dividing. In fact, I, there's different situations where, um, you know, somebody maybe, and I can speak to this either both in my family or in our in in our church or people other circles that that I have is that often people will say something and it's so kind of dogmatic and derogatory that they've pretty much just insulted 50% of the people that are likely connected with them and they don't realize it because most of the time the people who comment are those who agree and there will be some people who disagree and then you can dismiss them or say that they're insulting but the issue is that there are far more people who probably disagree who don't comment. And so um, I just want to encourage you, I want to ask you this question for those of you that are believers. If you're going and inventing, if you're venting on social media, you're just kind of like going off on, on somebody for whatever reason, politically or, or the way you think people are handling this virus pandemic, they should be doing this or they shouldn't be doing that. Um, I just want to ask you this question because some of the things I've seen, I just want to, I'm like, well, good luck for you discipling anybody in the church that disagrees with you because you just insulted them. You just went out. And again, I'm not saying there's never a time to take a stand, but some of these things are my personal pet peeves and I can't believe them and they tear them down. I'm like, you literally, I, I know of two people who you know, have a slightly different view and because the way you interacted with them, the way you kind of dismiss their viewpoint, there's no way for you to actually lead them to Christ or help them to become a more mature believer. Um, 
essentially you've wasted relational capital. Every one of us have a limited amount of relational capital. And again, I'm not saying there aren't ever a time where we, we take a stand on something like that, but for me, and like anybody else, I have opinions on certain issues and some issues I'm like, well, you know what? I really don't know. So I'm going to wait and see how it plays out. But I know that if I go dogmatic on something, um, you know, on social media or what's going on in the news or how people are handling certain things, I'm using my relational capital on that that I could use on on Christ and, and helping people grow more in Christ. And I typically will pick that one. Uh, and so if we're spouting off online about how other people I, I just want to know, especially I want to speak to those who are part of Red Church. And again, if you're not a part of Red Church, you're more than welcome to be a part of this. I would love to ask some of these folks who just say things and dismiss some of the people on social media. I just want to know if they actually prayed for them before they criticized them. I just wonder if they've actually take the time to pray for them and criticize them. Because I just think it's important that we remember if you were, if we're a Christian, that we were sinners and we made mistakes and other people saw us doing dumb things. And there are times when we thought we were doing the right thing and then it ended up not being the right thing. And often I'll see people who get upset. And even now, right now with the pandemic stuff, there's different views on how things should be handled. People think that they're an expert on how things should be done. And there's very little grace. And a year from now, two years from now, we might look back and go, wow, hmm, I didn't have all the information. I wonder if I could have done that differently. Well, at that point, perhaps you've already used the relational capital on that person that you could have influenced. Next is who we vent about often reveals a growth area in our lives, meaning who ticks us off, who rubs us the wrong way, what types of people, what groups of people, what philosophies of thought. And again, I, I'm all for having good conversations. I think it's tough to have a good, challenging conversation online. So I'm probably not going to be the one that's like having big arguments online because it almost never does anything. It almost never does anything. Um, but as a pastor, I, I I don't mind having tough conversations sometimes. Part of that has to do with if, you know, if they're open to ha being challenged or not, because there's a difference between arguing and persuading. As Christians, we should not be interested in arguing because arguing is all about proving that I'm right, has nothing to do with helping them see our view. Persuasion is about trying to help them see the truth that we've seen. Arguing is like just dismissing them, belittling them, pushing them to the side. You don't really care about them changing their mind. You only care about being right. And that's what a lot of things are going on online in our political climate. We really don't care about changing people's mind. We just want to belittle them and then move them on. Persuasion. I teach public speaking. Persuasion is a different thing. Persuasion it's going to be hard to persuade someone if you can't try to see them from their point of view. If you can't come to a point where you can sit there and say, you know what, we can't maybe agree on some things, but I can agree with you on this point and this point and this point. If we don't take the time to actually see if we can find um, these moments of agreeing, then we're not going to persuade anybody. And again, as Christians, this should matter to us. And if you're not a believer, then maybe it does, maybe it doesn't. Uh, but as a Christian, this should matter to us. Um, hey, Dana. Hey, Tiffany. Hey, guys. Um, I just want to know who we vent about often reveals a growth area in our lives. Um, it often reveals a blind spot in our own um, viewpoint. People, and I think all of us would probably agree if we're honest, we probably think we're smarter than we are. and We probably think we know more than we do. Because everyone's spouting off about, you know, they have become experts because they've read every modern article on the pandemic that they know exactly how things should be done. And I've talked with people who are medical professionals who actually are trained to deal with pandemic type situations. And even they are trying to figure things out. And there's different views of thought on what will work and what won't work. And this has been a conversation since before this was an issue. So be cautious because how we vent reveals a growth area in our lives. Um, I just want to highlight this. This doesn't mean that it's wrong to be angry or upset about an injustice, you know, because sometimes you'll see something that's wrong or, or, or what have you, but venting about it again, this is what we learned with David. David went and vented to God. He gave it to him. 
venting out loud to other people, especially in a social media as Christians. I just want to say this real quick, especially those who are part of Red Church. If you go out there and you lambaste and you beat up on people with a different particular viewpoint, you are slandering them. You are belittling them. It's also illogical. What I mean by that is it's not a logical argument. It's what we call an ad hominem. It's a fallacious way of thinking. Someone who just attacks a person reveals that they're not actually logically sound. And you can you can take that and apply that to almost every political party that's out there because they all do it at some point or another. But we should be different. Because if you go out there and just tear them down, it's not really dealing with their argument. You're just character assassinating them. That's not Christ-like. It's not a logical argument. It may be what you feel, but it doesn't necessarily mean that you're right or bottom line if it's Christ-like or not. Um, Often when we vent our frustration, it can plant seeds of anger and bitterness and unforgiveness and pride because as we lambaste, as we as we just tear people down on social media, it builds up our pride because some people will like it and agree with us. And we always hear more of those than negatives usually. So therefore, it, it's often not corrected. We'll just take the one or two that dismiss it or, or disagree and say that they're in the minority. I just want to challenge you right now. Because you may be the person who's ready to get out of the house and you're sick and tired of people making this a big deal. Or you may be the person who's sick and tired of that person and is like, hey, this is a serious thing. Take it seriously, you idiot. So there's people going back and forth and arguing with each other. And I just want to give you two examples that I know of personally. All right. I know of a situation where someone that I know has loved a lo- has lost a loved one to the virus. And so therefore... They're obviously very sensitive, as I'm sure you can imagine, to people just wanting to open it up because it's a very real thing for them. And my heart goes out to them. My mother passed in the middle of all of this. So I, I my heart goes out to them. I think the average person, if you saw a person like that, you can empathize with their point of view. They are experiencing something that maybe you're not. But then I've also talked with people who are in major trouble that that because things being shut down, they're losing their business and, and the stimulus isn't going to help. They don't qualify or it won't be enough to fix things. And what that ends up happening is, is like there's a situation where, um, where kids literally have gone without food. And even if they get food temporarily, there's a long term, like how there's a, a danger there. And I think if you know that person and you can actually hear the fear that they have, they want to get out and, and, and try to do something. If you actually know their situation, you can, even if you have a disagreement in in how things should play out, you can at least empathize with either situation. Or you have someone who struggles with mental illness and being stuck in the house, you know, is increasing whatever mental illness it is, and it actually is becoming a big problem. If you know that person and you you hear them talk about their story and you hear their tears and you hear them break down and their struggle of, of being stuck in this place, if you saw that person in real life, My hope would be as a Christian that you would empathize with them. But what happens is, is when we go online, and I've seen this and and happen with people in every phase of my life, in my family, I've seen it happen in, in my people I went to school with, I've seen this in people in our church. When we do that and we go on there and we place, because we think everyone should handle it the way we should handle or we would handle it. What ends up happening is we turn people into caricatures. They're not real people. They're idiots. They're morons. They're they're um, they're not real people. They're, they're, they're two dimensional beings that we can easily. It's what we talk a lot about at our church is that we dehumanize the person, and so any rational thought that they could use to justify their perspective, we don't even pay attention to it because we already have made our minds. I ha- I just want to highlight to you: this is not Christ like. Christ could relate to the Jew or the non-Jew, to the Roman, to the Samaritan, to the rich, to the poor, to men, to women. He had grace and he had mercy. Um, In fact, the person that he had the biggest confrontation with, Jesus, was a self-righteous, prideful person. And I just want that to sit with us because if we're a believer and we've done that, The great news about it is that we don't have to live live in condemnation. We can repent. If we've gone on there and we've all done it at some point in time, or we have just either online or in person, we've torn that person down. We've made them a character. We've dismissed their perspective. 
And that doesn't necessarily mean they're right, but even if they are wrong, we should still treat them with honor and respect and have a, because at that point, you, if you're ever going to persuade them, then you have to be able to try to see from their perspective. Um, and again, I'm not saying that if there are things that have been done wrong, that someone can't take an action, if that means civic action, as far as, you know, if there's an injustice or things have, have overstepped or, or something along those lines, there are steps that people can take, um, but do so differently than other people. Do it with character. Do it with respect. Um, and so I just want to encourage us and challenge us. All right. David knew who to vent to. He was a man after God's own heart. He says, I'm a man of prayer. Um, I just, I think it's a good practice before you go and criticize someone publicly or on social media, maybe spend some time praying for them instead and see if, if perhaps God might change their heart or, or try to try to see from their perspective. Um, I just want to encourage us to do that in this particular season, because um, you know what? I've also seen some of the greatest things where people have shown love to one another. And I, I just think that in this season as Christians, that we should reflect Christ and it will stand out amidst all this other stuff. Let us not be victim of falling into what everyone else is doing and getting wrapped up. If, if you're getting wrapped up in the media and you're getting wrapped up in the, the partisan stuff, maybe you do a, a media fast where you just kind of like, okay, I'm not going to go there. I'm not going to read it. I'm going to spend time with the Lord because you know, if if we cannot um, show grace and love to someone, again, it doesn't mean that we have to agree with them. That that's showing that there's again things in the heart that need to be dealt with. So, um, so again, what we vent reveals what's in us. When we vent and we tear out and we we rip into people, what's really in us? Uh, where we vent reveals our hope. Where are we venting? David vented to God. And who we vent about often reveals a growth area in our lives. Uh, perhaps the person that's driving you crazy was is there to help you grow a little bit. That could be a politician. It could be a boss. It could be a spouse. It could be whatever it is. It could be someone on social media. It could be someone you go to church with and you see what they post. Or it could be a neighbor. Whatever it is, whoever drives us the craziest and angers us the most, it's possible there's that it's revealing a potential growth area in our life. So um, that's what I have. And, and um, I'm going to close out in prayer here in just a moment. But I just, uh, again, if there's some things that you're dealing with and you'd like a devotional on it, send a message, uh, uh, message the Red Church page here and they'll let me know. And uh, again, let me know about your prayer request. Love to pray for you. Know that I'm praying for y'all. And um and I know some of you guys I've seen from along, some of you guys are in Michigan and some of you guys are part of the church and some of you are in, out of the country. Uh, but thanks for joining us. And I know some of you guys are joining in afterwards, uh, but let me pray for you. Lord, in Jesus name, I just pray for everybody that's on here or will watch it later. I pray a blessing on them. I pray God that you would inspire us, that you would convict us, draw us closer to you. God, help us to be able to vent more to you and have grace for one another in Jesus mighty name. We pray Amen and amen. All right. Thanks for taking the time. Have a good night.